Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To and wanted to describe in a quick overview video today on Windows 365. What is it? Uh, what are the options and why would you want to use it? Well, Windows 365, of course, is Microsoft's way of uh, trying to really capitalize on the new way that employees are working remotely. Uh, they realize and understand that businesses are now in this hybrid work configuration using distributed uh, employees who may be all over the world. So uh, historically, this has been quite a challenging problem for businesses to solve uh, in and among themselves with on-premises data centers and uh, other legacy technologies that uh, have been used to solve this problem. Of course, if employees are not at the office, they need access to uh, business critical applications, data, uh, collaboration, utilities, and tools. So all of those things are historically uh, quite challenging uh, when the rubber meets the road, so to speak, when you actually have uh, employees trying to get to and access their data, especially with all the network challenges involved, uh, trying to make that happen. So what Microsoft has done, and really this is just kind of a repackaging of, of similar technologies and offerings uh, in the past with uh, some new additions as well uh, with uh, Windows 365. Uh, but basically what this is, if you think about it, is just VDI in the cloud. Uh, and it allows organizations to essentially choose from uh, two different offerings with Windows 365. There is the business offering and the enterprise offering. Now, just my simple watered down explanation of the difference between the two the business offering is just simply a PC that you can remote into uh, in the cloud. It's like you would have any other PC housed somewhere else. Uh, you can just simply remote into this PC, launch applications, do what you need to do, then simply disconnect. However, in an enterprise environment, you most likely want to have those more enterprise specific tools such as uh, security configuration, policy management, uh, more robust deployment uh, options. All of those things do not exist in the business offering uh, as opposed to the enterprise Windows 365 offering. Uh, additionally, uh, one of the biggest differences between uh, the business Windows 365 offering and enterprise offering is the business offering does not natively hook into you your existing Azure uh, virtual network. So if your organization is already making use of Azure uh, today, um, your business Windows 365 uh, cloud PC will not natively tie into that environment. You would literally have to uh, do what you would do with any other PC, install some kind of VPN, some kind of tunneling uh, that would have to take place. However, the enterprise Windows 365 offering is a part of your virtual network. So, in fact, that's one of the requirements when you go to uh, deploy the enterprise Windows 365 cloud PC is you have to define basically uh, the requirements that are uh, necessary to provision that enterprise PC in your Azure environment uh, or the deployment will fail. Whereas in the business offering, Microsoft takes care of all of those nuances and, and various things that uh, have to be configured to make that solution work. Uh, so what I have, I wanted to just step through a couple of things and show you guys a couple of things uh, related to uh, this enterprise offering. So where I am now, uh, what is this? Well, this is Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center. and Interestingly, everything that you do with the um, 
maybe not say everything, but a lot of what you do, especially with the provisioning and initial uh, spin up of the enterprise Windows 365 offering is handled in the endpoint manager. Uh, in fact, if you go to uh, your devices after you log in, go to Windows 365, uh, you will see, of course, various options. Uh, you've got your overview, all cloud PCs, which will basically show you the licenses that you have available. Uh, if you don't have any that are in the provisioned state, they will basically uh, be available for you to provision. All of those things are shown. And um, just kind of give you an overview of that. Uh, you have provisioning policies that are required to actually provision the enterprise Windows 365 offering. You have device images where you can actually add custom images that can be used to provision. And, and that's a big thing because I think most uh, enterprise environments, businesses, they're going to have their own pre-packaged image that they want to use in a cloud environment with their software, their custom settings, policies, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, so that's going to be an important thing. Uh, and again, none of these things that I'm talking about are available with the business offering. Uh, next is the on-premises network connection. And as you see, I have a, a, a glaring checks failed here, and I'll explain that here in a second. But I think this is going to be one of the hurdles for most when they're trying to wrap their mind around the enterprise offering versus business. Uh, in the on-premises network connection uh, tab that you see here, this is required to have completely configured without errors to be able to um, provision your enterprise Windows 365 offering. So what is this? Well, it kind of sounds uh, a bit non-intuitive. Why would I care about an on-premises network connection? I'm talking about Azure. I'm talking about having a enterprise PC in the cloud. So why am I chained to my on-premises network connection? Well, a couple of things to define here. Uh, what is Microsoft calling an on-premises network connection? Well, this literally can be your Azure environment or it can also be uh, your on-premises data center. Uh, now, why, why is that required? Well, this on-premises network connection literally is required because at this point in time, uh, Windows 365 requires having a uh, connection, a direct connection or line of sight, uh, as you may see that referred to, uh, to an Active Directory domain services uh, environment. Now, as most of you probably uh, realize, an ADDS connection domain services connection is a traditional legacy Active Directory environment, not Azure Active Directory. I suspect that that will quickly uh, be a feature that will be released in the future uh, because this creates some complexities here that I would assume Microsoft would want to navigate away from. So you literally have to have a line of sight to wherever that on-premises, quote unquote, connection to your domain controller is. Now this on-premises network connection could literally be my Azure VNet that I have a Windows Server 2019 or Windows Server 2022 uh, VM uh, running and provisioned as a domain controller. Or it could, as we mentioned earlier, it could be my literal enterprise uh, data center as it exists today with a VPN connection. So you have to have that line of sight uh, connection uh, to your on-premises, again, using that word, domain controller environment. Now, there are also DNS ramifications with that. As you can see, I'm using a .local domain. Well, we know that is not resolvable uh, on the public internet. So how does that work? 
Well, if I take you just on a quick uh, tour of uh, subnets here, we'll go to virtual networks, we'll go to prod subnet, we'll go to DNS servers, and I want you to notice something that I am using a custom DNS uh, server setting. Now, what that is defining is I'm telling Azure that any machines that are on this particular uh, subnet, I want to use this DNS server. Well, if you, uh, in your uh, Windows 365 configuration to your on-premises network, you actually define which virtual network that Windows 365 Enterprise machine connects to. So as you can see, I've got prod subnet one. Why did I use prod subnet one? Well, again, if I go back to prod subnet one, I have a custom DNS server value entered that allows this uh, Windows 365 machine, enterprise uh, machine, to understand what this domain is. Uh, because if I didn't have that in place, uh, I would, of course, obviously have resolution problems and my checks would fail. Now, as I, as I showed you earlier, if I get back here, Windows 365 on-premises network connection, I have a check that has failed, and what this error is, is just for my testing, I had a domain controller that I had spun up in an Azure VNet, prod subnet one, as you saw, and Essentially, I loaded the Azure Hybrid Connector on that uh, domain controller just so I couldn't uh, or did not have to spin up additional resources. This is a test environment, so I multi-homed all of those services, and this box has since been shut down. <laughs> so, and, and I actually have a, a a shutdown time period set on the Azure resource just so since it's a lab environment, I don't want it running overnight, so it's since been shut down. But as you can see, it will quickly tell you if you have errors. Now, one thing that is required with this enterprise VM, especially with this network connection, is you have to have that Azure AD device sync enabled. Now, what that requires is just what I mentioned, you have to have the Azure hybrid connector solution. Uh, you guys have probably used that to uh, synchronize users, maybe for uh, Office 365, Microsoft 365, uh, or devices. So you have to have that configured uh, because what Microsoft wants to see is that you've got that hybrid connection from that on-premises, again using that word, uh, domain controller environment to your Azure Active Directory. And of course, if they don't see that, they're gonna present, present you with an error message. So uh, in the provisioning of enterprise cloud PC, uh, there are certainly some nuances here that make this solution much more powerful uh, when it comes to being able to uh, carry out enterprise functionality, features, uh, operations, all of those workflows that uh, IT is used to uh, carrying out with endpoints. Uh, but there also is that added complexity of the networking. Uh, you know, and in this day and age when we want to get a away from the complexities of networking, we want to be able to just plug something in and it works. And amazingly, that is the case a lot of times, uh, but it's just something to uh, consider with the uh, enterprise cloud PC is you do have to have that uh, connection to that legacy Active Directory domain services environment at this time. Uh, and again, as I suspect, that will be one of the uh, future enhancements, no doubt, to enable native Azure Active Directory enrollment where this could perhaps be optional uh, instead of a required uh, part of the provisioning policy. Um, and 
as you can see, if I quickly go in here just to show you guys the, the quick provisioning policy uh, that I had spun up, uh, you can see that it does require uh, this provisioning policy. It requires that on-premises network connection and is defined as part of that uh, policy along with the image, the group assignment, so on and so forth. So Cloud PC business uh, variant, uh, very handy. I mean, it, if you want something to quickly spin up to throw users on, uh, definitely more suited for your SMB market, small business, uh, definitely environments that only need just a handful of, of PCs to put users on. However, the enterprise version, much more powerful, more robust management features, more robust networking, uh, as it can actually tie into your Azure VNet as part of that provisioning. But it's important to note the differences and to understand which may fit your environment better. Well, hopefully this has been an informative walkthrough. Uh, these are just a few of the things that it took me quite a while to piece together from various Microsoft KBs, white papers, blog posts, uh, you name it. Some of this I just kind of had to stumble on myself uh, just to kind of wrap my mind around how uh, the pieces and parts of the enterprise um, cloud PC for Windows 365 is actually put together in, in functions. Well, again, this is Brandon Lee uh, with Virtualization How To. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please hit like, uh, subscribe uh, as well. Try to build out content on the channel uh, covering virtualization, Windows Server, uh, automation, DevOps, security, and the list goes on and on. Just topics of interest, topics that I think will help those in the community out. Hope to see you guys uh, soon. Please, once again, hit like and subscribe. See you guys later.